Our sun gets crazy busy this week with big solar storms, big solar flares, and a lot of radio noise on the day side. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Our sun picks up an activity this week in a big way. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we say goodbye to region 3486 and 87, but we'll return to those regions because they are growing on the sun's far side. Meanwhile, as we look at the rest of the disk, you can see a few filaments that look like they're going unstable, like those there and this one here in the north. Plus, we've got this one here in the south. And keep your eye on it because this one actually did launch as a solar storm on the 22nd. In fact, it even got some involvement from this region in here. So it was kind of a two-parter solar storm. Whoosh, right there, there it goes. And as we take a look at our coronagraph, you can actually see the signature here. It's not really a partial halo. It looks like this one's gonna go mainly south of Earth, but that's the first part of it. That's the filament that left the disk here. Now, as we continue pushing that forward, look at this second little miniature kind of signature here. This signature is from the region 3489 that's behind it right now. This one might actually clip us a little bit, but this one's probably not going to be that big a deal. It may hit us sometime around the 26th, but it's mainly because this region 3489 continues to be active. It is a big flare player, but believe it or not, it's not the only one. It's not even the ones that we're really watching. Of course, the ones that we're watching is this massive mess of over here. Believe it or not, just over the last few days, we now have 11 active regions in Earth view. And man, is this set of uh, uh, regions kind of clustered and busy and crowded and angry. In fact, region 3490 and 3492, those, these are the regions that we're watching. They have been firing solar flares and solar storms on the sun's far side. They are big flare players. So expect that risk for radio blackouts, maybe up to even an R3 level radio blackout blackout increase over the next few days. Uh, likely something is going to, to let loose here pre pretty soon. I don't know if it's going to be, uh, it's going to rotate into the Earth strike zone before we get a big solar storm launch or a big solar flare, but amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect the noise on the bands to be pretty intense. Expect that to continue because we even have more regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next few days. In fact, as we take a look at our JSOC HMI Helioseismology far-sighted viewer. We can see uh, this is the Earth-facing disk in gray here. This has been over about the past week, but in gold is where we see the stuff rotating to the sun's far side. And this is where I get back to talking about region 34, 86, and 87, because those are the regions that rotated to the sun's far side. And along with region 34, 72, and 74, these regions are the ones that have actually already rotated to the Earth, to Earth side again. You'll see them kind of popping out back Back in the gray. That's what all this cluster of junk is. It's old region 3472 and 3474, plus a whole bunch of new uh, regions are kind of coming up and emerging all around it. So these ones actually gave us trouble last rotation, and now they're back again with a vengeance. So we shall see what comes from these regions. We might finally get some more activity. It'll finally start looking more like solar maximum. Plus, we have regions 3479 and 3477, and there we go, 3487. So these regions, too, are all growing on the sun's far side. We could get uh, even more solar flux boost over the next week or two, and I guarantee you a uh, uh, big radio bursts are back on the menu, and so likely are solar storms. And no sooner than I said that, then we have to take a look at the east limb of the sun. Wait for it. You'll see a brightening whoosh right there. Do you see that? And then followed by pow. And again, 
pow! There were three different solar storms launched and that gave us an R1 level radio blackout uh, for quite some time and then a couple other uh, pops after that. But believe it or not, we are still dealing with big solar storm potential because these regions are still very, very active. We do even have a filament that looks like it might go here soon, plus new regions rotating into view and emerging at the same time. So this means activity is definitely going to stay uh, quite busy over this next week. And it looks like big solar flares, including R3 level radio blackouts and solar storms are going to be on the menu. In fact, as we take a look at our M-flare threat meter, look at the X-ray flux, watch it rise and rise and rise. We did get a few M-class flares over this past week, but really all of the activity has really kind of focused as we've ramped up. Look at this uh, floor, this noise floor. We are way above the C floor now, sitting at about a C5 level. That's just the noise level. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I guarantee you, you're dealing with a lot of noise on the bands right now on the Earth's day side. And you can see we got a pop up here. This was the, uh, the R1 level radio blackout and a couple other pops. Those were the solar storms that launched eastward of Earth. So we're going to be getting a lot more of these. We do have risk for an R3 level radio blackouts and GPS users definitely near dawn and dusk. Stay vigilant because your GPS reception may not be all that good. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions, well, we were expecting a hit from a big solar storm on the 19th and 20th, but as you can see, it was pretty much a fizzle. We stayed at unsettled conditions and didn't really go much from there. However, there was this fast solar wind chaser that we were expecting. Wasn't expecting all that much from that, and instead, Bam! Do you see that? We got hit by a stronger, fast wind, and which kind of made up for the solar storm fizzle. In fact, it bumped us to storm levels and kept us storming for almost over a day. And that brought some gorgeous aurora views clear down to Austria and Germany. We even had aurora clear down in Kansas in the United States. It was pretty crazy. So aurora photographers, well, they managed to get a bit of a show uh, just a little bit later than they expected. So that was a good thing. And now we're basically sitting at uh, unsettled conditions, and those conditions will continue uh, over this the next day or two until about the 25th when we're expecting to get that uh, glancing blow from that solar storm that's going basically south of us, but it could bump us up to active conditions, so aurora photographers get ready for that, especially at high latitudes. And with all this new activity that we're seeing, guaranteed the chances for Earth-directed solar storms over this week and the next are going to be high. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, let's return to the disk and take a look at all of the active regions in EarthView because, man, there sure are a lot of them, and we've got some new regions popping up all the time. In fact, the ones that we really want to watch is this cluster right here. This is because this is where the X-flare players are. So as we begin to blow that region up, you can see especially region 3490 and region 3492, these are going to be the regions to watch this week. The reason why is because they've got a lot of magnetic mixing. You can see the different colors here. This shows that there's a lot of magnetic orientations that are kind of opposite of each other, and that makes these regions really angry and unstable. So 3490, you'll see a few things growing in here here, and you can see region 3492 giving us trouble, and also a lot of new activity there, and all of the little lightning bolts that you see, that is showing the all, all this changing and magnetic reconfiguration going on. So these regions are growing quite quickly, and they're very unstable, so we could definitely see lots of like R3 level radio blackouts and uh, big solar storms, and these regions are beginning to rotate into the Earth strike zone over this next day or two, so expect more solar storms and solar flares to be on the menu. Now, returning to that solar storm that was launched back on the 22nd, we take a look at our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now, as we set this solar storm model in motion, you'll see that solar storm being launched mainly to the east of Earth and also to the south of Earth. But take a look at this little lip right here. Do you see that? That is the northwesternmost part of the solar storm that was launched back from region 3489. Do you remember in that coronagraph, I showed a second part of the solar storm coming out? 
Right, that's it. And sure enough, it looks like it's going to hit Earth just a little bit. NOAA has impact time just slightly in the afternoon on the 25th, but this uh, solar storm is also going to be followed by a fast wind chaser. This is some fast solar wind that's coming afterwards. So expect storming to definitely pick up by the 26th. We could be storming from like midday to late on the 25th into the 26th. And the last time we had a, a fast wind chaser, this the the wind was stronger than expected, so that may happen again. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you can definitely expect a show. And aurora photographers at mid latitudes, well, get ready. We might just have some surprise aurora even at mid latitudes. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 27th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, well, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. And now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that solar storm, that glancing solar storm blow to hit us sometime late on the 25th, followed by a fast wind chaser. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting active to minor storm conditions with up to about a 20 or possibly 35% chance of major storm conditions. It's kind of hard to tell this far out when, when we're forecasting that far out. We'll see if the models end up being uh, revised a little bit and give us a little bit back more accurate prediction. But Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you definitely could get a chance. Plus, we have so many new active regions in Earth view. There's going to be more chances for solar storms guaranteed. Now, at mid latitudes, well, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we could jump up to active conditions around the 26th. And again, the reason for this has to do with the fact that we've got that fast wind chaser along with that solar storm glancing blow. So you might get a chance for some aurora views. It's going to be hard to tell, but you know, stay vigilant because again, we could have big solar storms on the way here over this week and possibly even next. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we have so many active regions in Earth view that it's pumping our solar flux clear up into the 190s. In fact, over this next week, we might actually pop up into the 200s, believe it or not. We are sitting at moderate noise on the bands, and this is mainly due to regions 3490 and 3492. But we do have even more new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view that have already proven themselves as big flare players. So so expect that moderate noise to stay pretty high. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 55% chance of M-class flares. This is at an R1 to R2 radio blackout and even a 10% chance of an R3 level radio blackout. These are the X-class flares. This is over the next three, three days. I think that there's a chance that this will even pump up a little bit more as we move into the latter part of this week. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders and GPS users stay vigilant. And this is even and possibly satellite operators because we may be dealing with a uh, big radio blackouts that go up into the high frequency range just stay vigilant on earth's day side and uh you know know that that there's going to be a lot of noise on the radio bands this week and likely next week before things begin to calm down now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we everything is in the green right now, but likely this is going to change. We are at the D1 normal range, and this is at flight level 360 for you aviators, which is also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. We do have about a 5% chance of a uh, radiation storm at an S1 to S2 level, but at, as the week continues, that is easily going to rise. As we get to close to the end of this week, we will easily be 10%, possibly 15% chance for radiation storms because of all the new big flare players that have been rotating and emerging on the Earth-facing disk. So everything is okay for you frequent flyers and you air crew right now and the high-risk passengers, but definitely stay tuned to your space weather forecasts and those ICAO advisories because they are coming out quite quickly. So the space weather this week is getting more active by the minute. We have a lot of new regions either emerging or rotating into Earth view, and that means we need to stay on our toes this week. Now, we do have an Earth-directed solar storm that's going to give us a glancing blow right maybe midday on the 25th and into the 26th. And with that fast solar wind that's a chaser, we definitely could be getting aurora shows, especially at high latitudes. And now aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, well, you know, last time we had 
some fast solar wind, it actually gave us a better show than we anticipated. So you, even down at mid latitudes, might get some sporadic shows, so stay at the ready. Plus, with all these new active regions in Earth view and beginning to rotate into the Earth's strike zone, we definitely have a higher chance for getting more Earth-directed solar storms both this week and next week before things calm down. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we're dealing with an incredible amount of noise on the radio bands this week, and that's going to be a problem for radio propagation on Earth's day side. On top of that, we're dealing with these the chance for these big radio blackouts. You're probably going to see a lot of them, possibly up to that R3 level. So you're going to just have to deal with that and hunker down for the next week or two, possibly before things begin to settle back down or do some propagation, do some DXing on the night side. And now you GPS users, well, things aren't looking too good for you either. Right now, the dawn and dusk regions are likely a really hazardous time to get decent reception. And on the night side, when that glancing solar storm comes, you might have to deal with some aurora prop problems. So stay away from aurora, stay away from the dawn dusk terminators, and be very vigilant on the day side because that radio noise is just a killer. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.